New Westminster Veterans Oral History Project. Today's date is December 13, 2001. The interviewee is Stan Conway, who is with the Westminster Regiment. So, Mr. Conway, what is your full name? My name is Stanley Victor Conway. And what is your date and place of birth? On the 24th of April, 1924, in Toronto, Ontario. Uh, and your marital status? I'm married. been married for just over 50 years. Mm -hmm. And I have two daughters. One's 47 and one's 42. Right. What was your wife's maiden name? My wife's name was Caddis Chuck. Caddis Chuck. Caddis Chuck. And her first name? Am. A-N-N-E. -N -N -E. Um, where were your parents from? My, my mother was from Scotland, from Glasgow. Mm -hmm. And my dad was from Ireland, from County Mayo. Scottish and Irish. <laughs> and how did they get to Toronto? I think my mother come over after the First World War to to uh, uh, to go in the what you call house service. You know, the, at that time, you know, like a maid or something like right. that. My dad was over here prior to the the, the, the uh, First War, and he joined the Canadian Army, and he was a teamster in the Canadian Army. Oh, okay. In the service corps. Right, in the service corps. Um, so when did you get from Toronto to the West Coast? After the war, I had, I had met my previous wife, my only wife in, in, in Toronto, and, and uh, uh, there was a railroad strike on, and then after the railroad strike, she decided to come back to the coast here because she was from the prairie originally, and her parents lived out here in Burnaby. Okay. So she came out to, to, to Burnaby, and in November of 1950, I came out here, and we got married in, in uh, 1951. Right. And so what is your current address now? My current address is, is, is Coquitlam, uh, right. down at the Coquitlam Center. Right. And did you live in New Westminster at any point? Yes, I lived in New Westminster from 1952 to 1967. Okay. Um, what branch of the armed forces were you enrolled in? I joined up and I was in the uh, an infantry outfit by the name of the Lawrence Scots. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was with them for maybe a year and a half and they sort of cut them down a little bit and I was transferred to the the Camerons of Ottawa, um, and, the Cam and the Camerons of Ottawa are support battalions for the for the third div. And I was in the ACAC, and they, we never got any guns, so they cut the, the the regiment down shorter. And I went back the whole unit, and ended up with the Westminster Regiment. I went to went to Whitby and joined the Westminster Regiment. So you're a reinforcement then. I was reinforcement. Right. I see. Okay. What was your rank and position? I was a private, mm -hmm. uh, and I, when I got to the regiment and we went out on the, the arrest, uh, our officer asked if anybody could ride a motorcycle, and I was the only one, so I got, I became a DR, dispatch rider. Oh, okay, okay. Um, when did you enroll in the armed forces? I joined up in February the 10th, 1942. And that was in Toronto? That was in Toronto. Okay. How did your family feel about that? Well, that was not very nice. <laughs> anyway, I was 17. Oh, yeah. And okay. I had I had to have a a, a proof of age, you right. know. And I said I didn't. Have, I said I was born in Ireland. Anyway, I, when I went home and I said I'm going to the army, I thought I thought the whole hell was going to break loose. But anyway, I said I'm going to get in one way or another. So my dad and I went to a justice of the peace, and he swore that I was born in Ireland. And <laughs> no, the way sure. I went, and I was 17. So, so do you have an Irish citizenship then, or no, 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 I don't. I, I was born in Toronto. I, you, <laughs> know, I, you know, I lied a bit. Yeah. I lied about my age. I think I ma think. many of them did that. Oh yes. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, did you enroll with friends or on your own? A buddy of mine uh, had joined up just prior to me. And I went into the same outfit as him. Right. But when we got overseas, he went to the 3rd Div headquarters, and I ended up with the 8th Brigade headquarters. 
So we sort of got parted and then never saw each other again until we came home from overseas. Oh, really, eh? Yeah. Yeah. So how many years of service did you complete? I think it was uh, three years and ten months. Okay. I got out when I was 21. When you were 21. So that was in 40... 45. When in 45? Uh, the latter part of November. Right. Okay. And and was that in back in back Australia? in Toronto? Yeah. Uh, okay. 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 So when Canada declared war on Germany, how did you feel? Really, I was only a kid. I was 15, and I, uh, I'd heard you know you get through, through the newspapers and all that kind of stuff of what he was doing, and you don't, uh, you don't feel that good when you see a bunch of your people that you were. You were a little bit older than you, and next thing you know, they're in the army and they're gone, you know. And I never thought that I would be going, but when I was 17, I I decided that it was time to go. And and uh, I, you sort of go into the things like, like that for a lot for the excitement. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wouldn't say I was a a, a person that was, you know, a, a, a fight for my country and all this kind of stuff. I. You know, I got to be honest with you. I, mm-hmm. I more or less went for the excitement, and then you get the training of what you do, and, and it, it, it it becomes different. Different in what way? Well, you 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 know what you're there for. Right. You know, you're trained, and and uh, you learn how to shoot a gun and a rifle and a machine gun and uh, and several other things that you learn. Right. Right. T- tell me a little bit about training. Uh, the, when I f- first joined the Army, we, the training we did, I went to basic training in Chatham, Ontario, and I think that was for a couple of months, and a lot of marching and, you know, uh, uh, in, in that kind of way. It, 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 I guess it was more for the discipline end of, of, the, of, 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 of a person. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was very little that you learned to me as far as, a, a rifle, and you learn how to clean it, and all that kind of stuff. But uh, it was more of, of the discipline as to uh, how you uh, how you approach things, I guess. Mm-hmm. And then you went. I went to Borden for for advanced training that we did not complete. We ended up overseas, but that was more specific as to the way you do things and and. Uh, uh, the uh, it was uh, a lot more stringent training, and and, and right. before I went overseas. Right, and t- take me through a day, an average day of training, then in the advanced training. If you well, you, you're up bright and early in the morning and get cleaned up, and you yeah. make sure your rifle's uh, uh, clean and all that kind of stuff, and then you know you're allowed to be uh, uh, rolling in the dirt. Uh, uh, Going through under barbed wire and different things like this, and uh, you had to keep yourself clean for when you went on parade the next day. And, and uh, hmm. uh, we didn't do that much training because I don't know why. Uh, uh, what seemed to happen that they needed more reinforcements overseas, and and they cut our 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 advanced training down. And next thing you know, we're on draft to go to England. No kidding, eh? So what was it like going across the Atlantic? Oh, it was rough. Was it? <laughs> if we went in, you know, by the time we went left Halifax and went uh, in a convoy, uh, the ships that were with us, uh, I was on the Empress of Japan, which they uh, renamed the Empress of Canada because the Empress of Canada was sunk in the Pacific, and they renamed the Empress of Japan the Empress of Canada. Okay. That was a... Canadian Pacific ship. Okay. Passenger ship. I guess the word Japan wasn't very popular. It wasn't very popular. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, and then we, we got into, uh, uh, not Glasgow, but the, the, where the port is in the, on the outside of Glasgow. And we, we got into a train and went down into to southern England and, mm-hmm. and to a holding unit. And the next thing you know, we're, I'm out with, uh, with a, uh, uh, as a defense platoon with the uh, Lawrence Scots in, in the 8th Brigade Headquarters. Oh, okay, okay. So did you get any training in England? 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah we did. Uh, yeah. They had they had a lot of the older type equipment. Like I mean, our anti tank gun was a you know a, a, I think it was maybe a fifty millimeter uh, um, uh, cannon, they called it. But uh, you know, I don't I don't think it would it would uh, it would hardly go through the door of a car. You know that. <laughs> Uh, but they come out with better equipment later on in the in the in the war. The Piat gun and uh, that was uh, that was quite a thing. That's what Smokey Smith used a Piat. Oh, when he got a VC. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so in England, then, do you remember the date when you arrived in England or the year, anyways? It was uh, it was about the middle of June of nineteen. 19- Forty-two. I mean, I even went in wow, the air. Went that fast. Eh? I was. I went that fast. Wow. You know. Wow. Uh, and uh, the the, uh, the couple of outfits that I was with with the uh, Canadian Army, with uh, they seemed to cut down with with the amount of people that they needed, and we were we were disbanded. Some of us. Uh, I could have stayed with the Camerons of Ottawa and operated a carrier, mm. but. Uh, I didn't. Uh, I did. I wanted to get out of the out of the outfit. I didn't particularly like the outfit. Oh, really? Eh? You, you didn't like the the armor? No, I didn't like. I didn't. It was uh, well. Basically, I'm using the word. It was very a uh, very chicken shit outfit. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> uh, but uh, I don't know. That's uh, that's about the only thing I could say about it. <laughs> <laughs> so you wanted to get somewhere else. I wanted to go someplace else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so tell me a little bit about the UK. Did you do any social life in the UK? Oh yeah. Any chance we got when we got any pay that we got, we we went to the pubs and to the dances that were at the pubs and and, and whatnot. And I went to visit my family, my mother's family <laughs> in Scotland, mm-hmm. uh, and. Uh, I guess I was maybe too young to be uh, chasing these older women. <laughs> you were still a teenager. I was still a teenager. <laughs> um, what about the people, the civilians? Oh, the, the, no, there's no. Uh, they were they were great people. You know, I mean, uh, uh, they, they they really appreciated the Canadians over there. You know, yeah. we were we were well accepted. Yeah. You know. I don't think they accepted the Americans as well as they accepted the Canadians, but uh, uh, it was uh, they were good to us, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Of course, we were good to them too. Any extra extra stuff we got, if you knew somebody of some family or something, you know, we used to get parcels from home. We you could always give who your friend that and from England, you could always give them something out of your parcel, you know. Right, right. They, they were pretty hard up then. Well, it was all, everything was rationed. Yeah. You know, uh, and it would, they had a tough time getting sugar and, and, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You had a, when you went on leave, you had to take a, some ration stamps with you, you know, for where you were staying in order to, for them to get some rations for you. No kidding, eh? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So, tell me about going to the continent. <coughs> I left, uh, when I, when I went back the whole unit, uh, we we went to. Uh, uh, I was on a draft to go to uh, uh, the, to Italy, and uh, I got on another CPR ship, which was the Empress of Australia. Okay. And uh, it was an English crew that was on there, and the, the the type of food that you were getting was English. But uh, I don't know. I I volunteered to work in the kitchen, you know, and. They made fresh buns and all that kind of stuff. So I, and the, the amount of milk that they had in the in the freezer, I mean, it seemed to be fresh milk and fresh fresh buns. I we stole as many as we could, and we ate well. Oh, good. You know, but uh, then I landed at, landed in Naples and ended up in Abellino in in Italy, waiting to go up to the to the unit. Right. And did you know then that you're going with the Westminster Regiment? Well, I, we we were Westminster Regiment reinforcement because we had the badges and all that oh, kind of stuff. Right. 
And we did a little bit of training in uh, uh, in Avellino, and uh, it seemed to be in no time at all uh, there was a draft going up to uh, to reinforce. They had, they had just made a we're going to make a big push, so we went up and we stayed about ten miles behind the line in a, in a holding unit just off Route Six, right. just below Casino. Right. And when they had the the uh, uh, the battle at, at, at going over the Melfer River and, and uh, taking Casino. Uh, a few days after, we were a bunch of us were moved up to the regiment, mm. and I joined the regiment right after the Melfer River crossing. Uh, it was in that was on the 24th of May that that happened, and it was maybe the 26th or 27th of May that I went up at, to join the the battalion, hmm. but when I look in the in the orders that were are in the museum in New Westminster, you know you're not sort of taken on strength right at that particular time. I think it was June the third that I was taken on strength right. at the, at the uh, of the Westminster Regiment. Right, officially. Officially. Oh, I see. I but see. I was up there in the, the latter part of yeah. of May. Right. And what was it like? Being a reinforcement, like these are all experienced, well-worn soldiers, aren't they? Well, uh, I didn't feel uh, that uh, out of place. No, there was a lot of people that were in the regiment that, that, that I, I, fortunate or unfortunate, whatever way you want to put it, that joined the army quite a bit of time after I had joined the army, that were with the regiment. Oh. Already, you know. Oh yeah. Uh, being that I was uh, maybe made a reinforcement of the Westminster Regiment after I went back the whole unit from from the Camerons of Ottawa, so I had had a few years experience in the army, so it, it, it didn't wasn't that bad. Right, right. But right. Uh, I went to Twelve Platoon Number Three Section, and Ron Hurley was my my first corporal. Okay. And I remember we were sitting around having a, a cup of java or a cup of tea or whatever it is that they, it was tea anyway. And uh, we got talking about uh, New Westminster and British Columbia, and they said British Columbia is, is, is the, that's the, that's the beginning of Canada from the headwaters of the Fraser River is where Canada starts. <laughs> and uh, they, I had so many guys that, that were really from BC that told me that that, that this is where the, this is where Canada started. Well, in 1950, uh, I come out here and I, I I learned where Canada started, and it was the it was the headwaters of the Fraser River. <laughs> You've been reborn, eh? Yes. Converted. <laughs> so tell me about the the people in Europe, the Italians. What were they like? The Italian people. I think they were sure glad to see us. Yeah, you know they they uh, uh, they didn't want to be under Hitler or Hitler or Mussolini. Mm -hmm. uh, a few places that we had gone to, uh, and maybe we got pulled out a little bit, and you would talk to some of the people, and some of them could speak a little wee bit of English, and they had relatives in Canada. They did, eh? You know, and uh, uh, we were treated pretty good by the Italians. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't. Like you're going into a, it was like you're going into a foreign country, and you're uh, they're fighting against you. But the farther you went up, there was more of the Italians that were joining you. Mm. You know. What do you mean joining you? They had a they had a force that that helped us out quite a bit. Uh, uh, what they called Porter Force. Okay. And they were a bunch of Italians, I guess, led by. A guy by the name of Porter, and they called it Porter Force. Oh, I see. I see. And uh, they had they had relieved us once or twice. I can't remember uh, for sure, but uh, they were uh, they were all right. They were I can't complain, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. Right. And so you were in Italy. Were you in any other countries then in Europe as well? When uh, when they pulled the first Canadian Corps out of uh, uh, Italy. Like the first div and the, and, the, and the fifth armored, uh, we went uh, and got on the, the boats at uh, uh, Leghorn and went over to Marseilles 
Mm. And then our, with our scout cars and, and uh, uh, Bren gun carriers, we motored up from, from, from Marseille's up through France to into Belgium. Oh, okay. And uh, we weren't in Belgium that long before we were put into the line because this outfit we were going to relieve had been in the line too long. Right. So we uh, we went. We were one of the first of the Canadian uh, uh, group that mm -hmm. come from from Italy to go into action. Right. Right. And so, did you do Belgium, Holland, Germany? Is that how it worked? Sort of. We went. We went from. We went through. France into Belgium and late and waited in Belgium for a, a short period of time and then, then we were we were moved up to the to the uh, where the Canadians were fighting in in Holland okay and we went into the line in Holland okay in uh, uh, where I, I don't know the name of the place uh, right. but uh, some guys can remember more than I can but uh, but we were we were one of the first. I think the reason that we could we moved in first is because we had half we had white scout cars and carriers and we could move quickly. Right. You know, so we could go in a, in a matter of 24 hours. Uh, we could we could be there. Mm. You know, it wasn't uh, it wasn't like you're you're getting a regiment that uh, you have to order trucks to take them somewhere. We already had our vehicles. Right. You know, right. we were mechanized infantry. Right. So you mentioned that you, um, that you're a dispatch rider. Mm -hmm. When did you become a dispatch rider? When I got to the regiment, we, in June, the, uh, my officer who was Art Miller asked if, if uh, anybody could ride a motorbike. And I said, uh, I can. So that was in June of 1944. I had taken training on a motorbike in England. Oh, you had. I, I had. Right, right. I had driver's training. I had uh, trained on the carriers. Uh, uh, I had. Uh, I had done a lot of that in, my, in while I was in England during right. uh, during the two other regiments I was with. Right. What, what does a dispatch rider do? Uh, <laughs> the uh, you are the go between. Uh, in a lot of cases, um, between the company and the battalion and your and your platoon, okay. you know, and then when you're moving in a in a in a in a column with the with the with the uh, the battalion, you're directing traffic or or something like that, or right. somebody breaks down, you got to make sure that they get in uh, 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 to where you're going. Right. You know, I. Uh, when we were leaving the Volturno Valley to go to back into the line again, I got a flat tire. Oh yeah. And I was the last. I was the trailing of the whole battalion, and I'm the last one. And I got a flat tire, so I pull off to the side and take the front wheel off, and, and all the corps or all the, the the brigade is going by me, and then a, a signaler who was a dispatch rider stops. And he's the last one, so he helped me, and we uh, we uh, fixed the tire, and, and we got some air into it, and all that kind of stuff. No sooner that that happened, and I got out, we got out to Route Six off this gravel road, and I got a problem with my front wheel; the axle screwed up. So we went slowly back. We rather than making a right turn to go up to through casino, we went the left left turn and went down to uh, I forget the name of the place, but anyway, uh, we went and found a, 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 a shop. Mm -hmm. uh, like it was a British shop, um, like the Ordnance Corps, right. and got an axle. Right. And by the time we had done all this, we had lost a day, you know. Right. right. So we're a day behind uh, <laughs> the people. You the, 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 the people that were with. I mean. But the, the the signaler stayed right with me, you know, and yeah. made damn sure that I got in, yeah. you know. Yeah. So it was a, maybe two days after they had got to where they're going, I we showed up, you know. <laughs> and did they but, know? What oh, happened? they they when I with our scout cars and whatnot, uh, you could they could see that uh, uh, all of a sudden I pull off of the side of the road and I got a problem. 
somebody knows I got a problem. Right. You know. Right. So. Right. Did that sort of thing happen a lot? No, there's some. You sometimes get a breakdown. Uh, you sometimes get a breakdown uh, of, of vehicles, and and uh, the the Remy uh, is is usually around to help you. You know, mm-hmm. if a, a carrier broke down or a, or a tank broke down, the mm-hmm. Remy is there in in behind everything to to. It doesn't happen very often. No. The, the, the carriers lambda to, to throw a track or. or you know, going over a rough terrain, you might break an axle or something right. like that. But uh, uh, the uh, the Remy was there, right. Right. which was the Ordnance Corps. Right. Um, this is a bit of a general question, but um, were you directly involved in any campaigns during the war? Yes. When when we left the Volturno Valley, we were going up. Uh, they the they had defenses like uh, the. the Gothic line, the Hitler line, and, and right, whatnot, right. and uh, that's what we were going up at to, at to break through these li- these uh, li- lines that they had put up, mm-hmm. which were, which was a, a defensive line that they had put up. Right, and so these was a line of like carriers uh, and men. And well, it was a it was a, a they call it a line, but it, it's a uh, it's a reinforced area right. a, 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 across the countryside. That they don't want to let anybody come through, right. you know, and they just call it the line, right. you know. But uh, <laughs> that's what we were going up there for. And when we got up to where we were going, we uh, were told by I was told by my officer that I we could uh, we were going to make a night infiltration, mm-hmm. you know. So I could I was going with with. Um, the, uh, there was radio silence and all this kind of stuff, and I was going with the uh, company headquarters to be the go-between between, between the, the company and the platoon. Right. And I could take my motorbike with me, you right. know, if I wanted. I thought, hell, that's crazy. He had some the noisiest thing around. Uh, no kidding. You know. So I didn't. I walked. Okay. But one of the other guys took his motorbike, you know. I thought, I stayed far away from him as possible because he was drawing all the sound, you know. Anyway, when we got to where we were going, uh, we had to, uh, the platoon all dug in and whatnot, and uh, I was still with the co- company headquarters to, to, as a go-between because of the, the radio silence, and uh, one of the, our, ni- our nine platoon come up with their carriers, and I don't know who it was, but they, there was a tank going across Oh, 500 or a thousand yards away. You know, you could see him on the, uh, through this this valley, and, and it was a tiger, big tiger tank, and some crazy bugger opened fire with a 50 caliber gun, and I think the tiger tank just went in behind the bush and pointed its 88 over our way and onto that crossroads and killed a few of us. No kidding. You know. Anyway, it was a wasn't the brightest thing to do. From that point, I had to go back. Our scout cars and my motorcycle were far, quite a ways back. So I got a ride back with the other DR and, and went back to bring our our carrier, or our, our scout cars up. So we brought them up. The platoon got into the scout cars, and uh, it was, I think there was only three, three DRs in the company, Heck McDonald and Jackie, Sarah, and myself. And we had to go down through a swale and come up the other side and then go off to the, into a, an area and park mm-hmm. the vehicles and then go by foot. Mm-hmm. Well, when we went, we're going down through the swale, Jackie, Sarah, and I went with, with our motorbikes. Uh, all of a sudden, this 88 started to fire at us from our, from our left-hand flank. So we, into the ditch and, and, the bike went squealing. Okay. Anyway, uh, I'm laying down there, and Jackie's about eight feet up in front of me, and I'm my head is towards his feet, and this 88 shell come and landed right in between us and blew dirt all over the place. It didn't hurt either him or I. Huh. But when the scout cars were going by, everybody thought we were dead. Mm-hmm. Scared hell out of me. But... When we got up and they, that tank took off, 
we, um, I got up to get my bike, and when I looked at it, the back spoke, or the back axle had been hit by shrapnel. It wasn't, it didn't hurt it that much, but it, it, the bike had been hit. Right. But, uh, it was all right. I got a, finally got a new wheel on it later, but, uh, uh, it, it sort of scares you a little bit. Close you know. calls, eh? Yeah. But, uh, there was a few accidents where you'd went to when you're, you're, uh, although I was the DR, I still went out on, on patrols and all that kind of stuff that was, mm-hmm. when it was my turn. You know, yeah. just because yeah. I was a DR, I, I wasn't exempt from going out, out on a patrol with somebody. Mm-hmm. But, uh, right. you get scared a few times. Uh, yeah, a little shaken yeah. up. Oh, anyway. yeah. Oh, yeah. Describe to me a little bit about uh, a regular day, if there's such a thing, when you're in action. What sort of things do you have to do? Uh, well, if you're in a static position uh, and you have a, a an outpost that you have to uh, go to, you take your turn and go out to that outpost. You might have, uh, like, a, you, we might be up against a dike and we might be in a house, but we've got outposts out uh, and you take your turn going out there uh, for a couple hours. Sentry type thing. Yeah, you're you're out there in a slit trench and, and watching to see what's going on so nobody comes in, oh, in on you. Right. Or maybe you're sitting in this house and, and uh, uh, there's a window on that side where the enemy is and you might have a, a Bren gun or, or something propped up in there that you don't want to make anything different from when... If he looked at it one time and that window was closed, and he looked again and it was open, you you know you you had to have, have it, everything that basically the same. Right, right. And uh, you would you would sort of take your positions and, and uh, you would uh, you know uh, sometimes we had a the the you had your rations that you had uh, with you or or you uh, you could cook up or or something like that. Uh, mm-hmm. And at night time, we were out in these outposts so that maybe Jerry was was sneaking around, you know. And uh, you see. you had to if you when you were in a static position, mm-hmm. you know, everybody took their turn. Uh, being the DR, I the the radio operator uh, uh, taught me how to operate the radio. And when he went out, had to go out on leave, or was going out on leave, he went back to Rome for a week. I'm the one that has to carry that that 18 set. That's pretty heavy, but I I, bet. I, I got along all right with it. Yeah. I never got any trades pay for carrying it, but he <laughs> but he did anyway. But that was the only way that he could go out on leave was is to have somebody operate the radio. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tell tell me a bit about. Um your uniform and supplies. If you're a dispatch rider, would it have been any different from anyone else's? Yes, yes. Uh, I had a, a different type of a helmet. Okay. Uh, it was a lot like the helmets that they wear today for the, these uh, 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 bikers. You know, oh, yeah. I, I have that, that strapped on under the chin and, and whatnot. Oh, like a... Some of them, some of them were just like a foam cover. Uh, the one that I had issued to me was a steel covered, and it was uh, a nice, it might fit nice because you could adjust it to, to, to the mm-hmm. fit. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got gloves with like gauntlets, you know, mm-hmm. that our hands wouldn't freeze on us. Uh, we had long boots that came up to here. Up to your knees? DR boots, up okay. close to your knees. Mm-hmm. And we had DR pants. That was like riding pants that you see the RCMP when they're in their in their fancy uniforms. Okay. We had boots like that, but they were black, and we had pants like that. I never carried a rifle when I was on the on the on the motorbike. I had a Thompson submachine gun. Oh, okay. And and that would be in a. Beside you or something? No, no, no. I, 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 it's on a sling, and I had it slung over my back. Oh, okay. And in order to make it smaller, you take the handle off it, and all you have is the metal portion. Right. And, uh, but the Thompsons, uh, maybe the the DRs that were 
going into the to the the second front or the the uh, uh, going into the landing in 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 Norway, uh, well, Normandy. Them, right. Maybe they carried Sten guns or something like that. But us in Italy, we had Thompson submachine guns, were which were American guns. They were a forty-five caliber. A good gun. Uh, with submachine guns. If you see some of these movies from, from old times of these guys with the with the Tommy guns and with the big round uh, casing, or oh, right. we didn't have that type of a. That's a, that was a hundred rounds that was in us. We had a, a tubular uh, a carrier for the for the for the uh, magazine. Right. right. We had a, a long one that was about. Uh, nine, ten inches long. Right. And and so you were in Karki as well? Yeah, we were in Karki. I mean, my my uh, uniform top was the same, you know, and, my, and uh, uh, everybody was issued with a leather jacket uh, to keep the wind and cold out. Uh, uh, the DRs needed them more than anybody because you, when you were riding, you had this leather jacket with no sleeves on it. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, to, to cut the wind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the summertime, I would be in short sleeve shirt and be and I have freckles. Every morning when I've got up, there was blisters in between my freckles and I got hundreds of thousands of freckles on my arms. <laughs> <laughs> there was lots of blisters on my arms from the windburn. Oh, from the windburn? Oh, really, eh? Wow, how about that? Tell me about things like mail service. Well, you, you <coughs> uh, we did all right for mail. We did, uh, uh, when we were in action, like right in action, maybe the mail was held back until we, till we pulled out or got into a static position for a while. Mm -hmm. That would, would, uh, everything was sort of held back in that respect. Uh, I mean, you, you had friends at, in Canada and places that sent you cigarettes and, and they come in the mail and you got your, your, regular mail uh, mm -hmm. from your family and, and whatnot, you know, and uh, actually we got, our mail service was actually pretty good. I can't yeah. complain about it yeah. at all. Yeah. Uh, as an aside, I've heard many, many people talk about cigarettes. Did everybody smoke? Uh, if if they didn't smoke, they, uh, before they went in, they smoked when they got there because everybody seemed to s send them cigarettes. Right. I mean, my brother never smoked when, before he went into the Army. Yeah. And, and uh, he smoked because people sent him cigarettes. Yeah. And when he come home, he had lots of cigarettes in his kit. And he said, when I smoke those, I'll never buy them. And he never, ever bought cigarettes. Said, when they were finished, he never smoked again. Oh, right, right. Oh, good for him. Um, were you ever injured? Uh, other than the fact of uh, down near breaking my ankle on a... On a uh, Falling off the motorbike, uh, yeah. going too fast. Uh, uh, no way. I've been hit by shrapnel, but it was spent shrapnel. You know, I got hit in the elbow, and I maybe got a bruise there, but right. I never was. Uh, uh, I never got. Uh, fortunately, never got hit. So you, were, you never had to go to the hospital then, or did you? I I went to the hospital. Uh, uh, I got malaria. Oh. I got malaria. In uh, the latter part of 1944, I imagine I got it in 44, and it never showed on me until till around Christmas of 44. <coughs> I was on an NCO course when it hit me mm -hmm. uh, in Ravenna, mm -hmm. and I never finished the course. I ended up in the hospital, and then it would keep coming back on me, you know. Really, eh? yeah. and uh, we covered it up quite a bit. Uh, uh, so that I didn't have to go out and stay out, you know. Right. But when I when I got really cold and shivering, they would heat rocks and and put them in my my blankets with me. To, to what you do is you're shivering and you're sweating, you know, and your temperature is about 104, 105, you know. But uh, so did you ever go to the hospital? Yes, I did. When I went when I went to. Uh, when I was in Ravenna oh, right. uh, on this NCO course, yeah. I eventually had to go to the hospital. What, what were the hospitals like? Pretty good. 
Was it a great. Canadian hospital? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Canadian hospital. Yeah. And then when I went out on leave from Holland to to uh, back to England, it was just about the time that the war was over. I went to Scotland and come back to London, and I got drinking too much, and I ended up in the hospital. The malaria hit me again. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, I was a, about a week and a half, and then... Then my pass was no good, you know, to get back to the to the regiment. They they shipped me to the whole unit in uh, Aldershot, mm -hmm. you know. Well, that was that wasn't very nice. But by the time I was trying to get back to the regiment, uh, it would be about May of 1945. I'm on a bit of a leave in in London from Aldershot, and the war was over. Right. But you know, it, the, the VE day. I was in London at the time. Oh, you were, eh? Th this guy, um, I'll, I'll get back to that VE Day for sure. But um, did you participate in the liberation of any countries then? Well, you you you, you would venture to say that uh, the liberation of, of Holland, I would, you know, we, we were partly into that. You know, I mean, once you go there, you you are liberating. We we were our regiment when they went into Holland, liber were in right. the they were liberating uh, Holland. So what about Italy? Were you, did you leave before it was actually sort of... Yes, finished? yes, it wasn't over. The, they were uh, they were in the northern part of Italy, uh, and uh, Mussolini was already dead, and mm -hmm. hanging from his heels from some flagpole. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, uh, the Germans were still in the northern part of Italy, but right. they pulled the Canadian Corps out. And we went and, and became a complete army in, uh, with the with the uh, with the Second Corps. Right. Right. Okay. Tell me about um, things like social life in the service. What was there such a thing when you were in in, in Italy or Holland? Not no, not so much there. That they they would have a show. Yeah. You know, uh, they if, when we were out on on they got pulled us away back. They would have. Uh, an outdoor show or the, the the KFC or the or the uh, <coughs> Sally Ann would have a, a, a canteen. Okay. You, uh, those two places you could never get a drink in a canteen, but you could always get a coffee, and they always had a show. If they were bringing up any entertainment from from uh, the English entertainment or the Canadian entertainment, mm -hmm. it would come up through the, the canteen. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, the uh, when we went to Leghorn, there was a uh, and we were in a staging area. I met a guy that I was in uh, Lawrence Scotts with, and he was too old to be to be with an outfit. And he was the driver for the guy from the K and C. Mm -hmm. And they were setting up a big tent, and they had a freezer there with all this uh, uh, beef and whatnot. They were grinding up to make hamburgers for all these guys. That, that just to make them think they were at home, you know. Okay. It was, uh, oh, there's some of the things that they did, you know. Uh, really touching, eh? Oh, yeah. They, uh, uh, I think it was the KSC that that, that, were, that did that. What does that stand for? Knights of Columbus. Oh, of course. Right, right. They, well, they still do have it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the Sally Ann was great, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, the NAFI, which was the British... Uh, uh, portion of, of, of uh, entertainment or whatever for in these camps for the for the uh, troops. Right. But that, that was the British with the NAFI right. and uh, the Sally Ann and the, the KFC Knights of Columbus. And the Sally Ann and the Salvation Army. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 What what sort of friendships developed? Oh, I I have a buddy that I met with the Westminster Regiment that now lives in the Soyuz and I'm he come up to the outfit after I did and he uh, lived in Edmonton and when I come out here I got, we got in touch with each other and we met in the Soyuz and stuff like that and then he's been a buddy of mine since 1944 no kidding when we go down south my wife and I we used to see him and his wife down in, in California and whatnot. Him and I were the best of friends. Hmm. 
and the friendships that I've made with with people that are in the Westminster area, uh, they're 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 lifelong friends that you just never forget. You know, there's people that are still around the armories and whatnot, and we get it along in our association with the Westminster Regiment Association. That is, the camaraderie is just excellent. Right. You know, just excellent. Right. And um, and you still maintain these. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, What about, tell me, your commanding officers. Did you have a relationship with them? Well, when I went into the we had uh, officers and sergeants and, and non-commissioned officers in the Westminster Regiment that were second to none. Yeah. We had the best officers and the best commander that you could ever want to have. Hmm. We would go to hell for them. Really? Eh? We'd go to the end of the earth. That's that's how they were. You know, it was it was just. Uh, um, it was overwhelming, you know, to the, I mean, my, the officer that I had, first officer that I had that eventually went out wounded, Art Miller, who lived in Westminster, raised in Westminster, and eventually went to Kamloops and died in Kamloops. He was, he was the best. Mm-hmm. He was the best. He got a military cross. Very good officer. Mm-hmm. Did you have any... Like, it sounds to me like the regiment is a pretty tight regiment, eh? Very tight. Yeah. I mean, I, it didn't matter if you come from Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Montreal, <laughs> Toronto, or wherever you came from. There was a lot of guys in the prairie, in Alberta and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Everybody looked after everybody else. Mm-hmm. They were just, just that way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think you'd find that with most of the, of the, People that were in the, uh, in, the in, in, a, in a regiment. I see. Yeah. Right. I was not as close with a lot of the people in the prior regiments that I was with, but I got very close with the people in the new West, in the Westminster regiment. Right. They yeah. call it the Royal Westminster Regiment now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you have like one memory or experience of your time at war that really made an impact on you? Uh, no, not, not, not uh, I should have been dead. Um, right. When we were in a, a, a static position, we, I had been out, our scout, our car, our, our vehicles were parked a mile or so, a mile and a half away from where we were. And we went, when we went in at night, nobody knew how to get back to them. But right. I had been back and forth a couple of times. And knew how to get in and out from from where we were in the static position to back to the vehicles. And our radio operator had just come come back from leave. Yeah, and so he knew the way where the where the vehicles were. We had we had phones rather than the radio, you know, because we and they they got a call from the from the company commander or, or the company to find out if they had anybody that could take a platoon out because they don't know how to get back to the to the vehicles and there was two of us. Trimble knew and I knew, so I said, Well send Conway over. So I went over was going to go over to ten platoon and lead Ted put ten platoon out. And <coughs> I knew this early in the day and we were relieved by the uh, the British Air Force had a bit a, a rifle battalion, mm. and we were relieved by that that battalion at night. Okay. Maybe it'll end at, at dusk, and they went into the trenches that we had out there, and uh, uh, took over our positions. We got a phone call on the radio, or not? A, we got a radio call for me not to bother going over because Millet, their radio operator, had just come up from leave, and he knew how to get back down to where their vehicles were. Right. So we were getting ready to leave, and next thing you know, we hear a shot. Next thing we know, that here a millet was killed. We got a bullet right through here from one of these British Air Force regiments. No just, he was leading the platoon out, 
and got shot and got him right in the forehead. That should have been me, because right. I was supposed to take that platoon out. I'll tell you, it, it, it rocks you when you think of it. Maybe you're at the right place at the right time, but uh, right. Uh, there's times like that, and when you get so close to a shell, like when Jackie, Sarah, and I were in that in that ditch, and a shell landed in between us, man, it rocks you. Mm -hmm. It rocks you. Mm -hmm. No kidding. No kidding. Well, you made it through, eh? Yeah, I made it through. <laughs> and, made it. and and let's go let's go a little bit further forward now. And you were talking about you were in London and VE Day. Tell me about that. I had uh, when when I come back when I was on that leave from 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 uh, Holland. I went to Scotland. I come back to London to go back to to over to Holland, and uh, uh, I got gowed up a little bit, and, and I ended up I I was shaken and, and and whatnot from from the the malaria was hitting me again, and I end up in the hospital, and then I went back to home unit. Well, being that I had come out of the hospital, I was able to take a leave, mm. so I went to London for a few days, and at that day. That time that I was in London, uh, VE Day hit. Uh, the streets and the, the main corners, like Piccadilly Circus and, and all these places, uh, the, everybody was out in the street and just having a ball. Yeah. You know, the women were grabbing you and kissing you and, and dancing with you, and, and uh, it was a, uh, it was quite a time. I bet. I it bet. was quite a time. Everybody was happy. You know. Did you find anyone you knew? No, uh, I didn't. Not that. Uh, well, I went on leave with a with a guy that uh, I know. I can't tell you his name, but he was. We were next bed to each other, and next thing you know, we're going on leave together. So we weren't going anywhere special. So we went to London. Right, right, right. And we stayed in the Gordon House, uh, uh, which was not too far from from the Lord High Admiral, mm -hmm. and we. Uh, you, uh, this was one of the. It, the Gordon House now is a is a hospital in London, I, and they might call it Gordon Hospital, but that's what. The last time I was over in, in not the last time, but when we were over in '68, and I went down to where the Lord Harry Admiral is, and right across the road is is a is that place, and, and that's the Gordon. I think they call it the Gordon House, but it's a hospital. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. And so you stayed there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, tell me about your journey home. When you first found out <coughs> that you were going home, to when you made it home. Well, I uh, when I went back to the to the to the holding unit, they were asking for volunteers to go to the Pacific. Mm -hmm. I was young and crazy and whatnot, so I said, "Well, it's over over here. I might as well go to the Pacific." So I volunteered, and in no time at all, we were all packed up. And shipped to Liverpool, the ones that were in the holding unit, and uh, I got on the Ile de France mm -hmm. and sailed back to Halifax, and then back to Toronto and got a month's leave when I got got home. Right. Now that was in July of 1945. By the time my leave was over, VJ Day was on. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I went back to the uh, when my leave was over, they told me to take a couple more days, and then when I come back, they shipped us all to a bunch of us to Barry or Barryfield, I think, or Kingston. Kingston. Okay. I think the name of the barracks was Barryfield. Uh, anyway, they were uh, had a bunch of us guys there. Some were some were guys that had only been in the army for a short time, and they were. This is the people that were going to supposed to be going to the Pacific. I had been in for. A, a few years, and they were starting to do this sloping arms and all this kind of stuff, and I thought, I've done enough of that, hmm. you know. So I went out on a two. Next thing you know, my malaria hits me again, and, and uh, I went to the ammo and said I needed some quinine, and he wondered why. And I told him I had malaria. He said, where'd you get that? And I said, I got that in Italy. He says, you're too young to be in Italy. So anyway, my papers, my medical papers hadn't shown up. 
So he gave he test I mean, my temperature's a mile up and whatnot, so he puts me on light duty. And uh by that time my temperature's uh down again and, and I I went out on another two my you know, the I wasn't gonna do any parade ground soldiering, I said, mm-hmm. but I was thinking about mm-hmm. anyway, I I ended up with uh uh he's he said, just a minute, I think your papers are here. And uh, he said, by geez, you did. We, we were in Italy. You did have malaria. I said, you didn't think I was lying to you, you know. But I was on light duty. And then they, next thing you know, whether they're, you're getting out of the Army by how many points you have, mm-hmm. you know. And I was, I had enough points that I was maybe the second bunch of guys to leave that camp mm-hmm. because of the, the amount of time that you're overseas and the amount of time that you're in action and the amount of time that you're in Canada mm-hmm. all meant different amount of points. Right. Mm-hmm. So I was right up at the top to get to get out. And you did. And you did. What was it like? Uh, what was the environment like in Canada after the war? What were people like towards you? I, I don't think uh, it was that bad. I, uh, you know, the I got a job right away driving a streetcar in Toronto. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only thing, uh, they had women that were doing that, and they had, uh, and they only had them until such time as the, as everybody, a lot of the troops were back from, from uh, overseas, and then those women were, were, were laid off. Oh, I see. They had the same thing in Vancouver here, but they never went to that extreme that they, they, uh, uh, equal work, equal pay, uh, and all that kind of stuff. They were more farther advanced out here than they were in Toronto in that respect okay. of, of uh, uh, the women that were on the streetcars and all one not out here stayed on them and you know oh, they didn't lose their job because the men came back. Right, right, right. But uh, they after I that I went and worked on the railroad, so uh, I think the people were. You know, glad to see us back. Uh, everybody seemed that that wanted to work at a job. So, mm-hmm. you know. So you worked on the railroad, and that's until you retired. Is that? No, right? no, no. I oh, okay. was on her about five years, and I go out here, and I went worked for the BC Electric mm-hmm. uh, on, a, on the trams, and then a, driving a bus. And I got out of that, and I went into uh, uh, into the parts business. I worked. For as a partsman, and then I, when I was a, a road salesman for for the a Chrysler dealer in New Westminster, mm-hmm. and okay. I was a, a commission salesman selling parts mm-hmm. to service stations and body shops and industrial. Right, right. And I did that until well, I got sick of it, and then I went and worked for the school board for five years before I retired. Oh, okay, okay, good. Do you think that veterans have been treated well? I can't complain at all, you know. <coughs> I think the Canadian veterans are treated a lot better than the American veterans. Uh, mm. uh, that's personally, you know, I I, I can't. Uh, 